Right, this week on the GCN Tech Show, I'm gonna check out Cab's new custom kicks, two very special edition bikes, plus a 20th anniversary Pantani bike, which is very cool indeed. Not to mention bits of custom tech that you've been submitting for me to check out, as well as all the usual favorites. Let's do it. First up this week is news from Mark Cavendish and specifically some new footwear I saw on his feet at the UAE tour. Now I did say to Kev, nice shoes mate, and he did commend me on my eagle eyes for spotting them, but at the same time did say to me, keep them sealed up until Paris-Nice. And I did Mark, so there you are, and he did actually reveal them first on his Instagram page. So as you can see, they are a knitted style upper, so similar to that of the DMT K1 shoes that people like Elia Viviani are using. And what's ultra cool about them is that he appears to have both a high top and a low top version there too. So the picture on his Instagram page, that's with the high top. And well, I actually managed to snap a picture myself sneakily of the low top ones. Now, all we need is for Nike to actually release these for public sale because I think they look absolutely cool. And while Nike used to make cycling shoes in the past, a great finishing touch though, I must just say, is that inside of the Nike swoosh or swoosh or tick, whatever you want to call it, is the names of every single person who's been involved in the production of them along that production line. Nice little nod to them. For I think 15 years now, they've been sponsoring Cab. Sticking with very cool things that can be bought is this Bianchi Specialissima. Now it's a 20th anniversary replica or well, modern day equivalent, if you like, of the Mega Pro concept, which Marco Pantani used back in 1999. Now, what's so special about this is it's to commemorate almost the stage, which was stage number 15 of that year's Giro d'Italia, when Pantani lost 30 seconds at 10 kilometers to go, and then went on to actually win the stage without even realizing, because he thought there were still people ahead of him. It's certainly a featherweight, just 780 grams. So it's nothing to be sniffed at whatsoever because that is majorly light. And importantly too, I've got somewhere one of those saddles. I will have to dig it out and bring it in because it was so cool, the embroidery and all of that. Right, anyway, price-wise, because I know you're all keen to find out, 4,699 euros for the frame and fork. So it is a pretty special price for a special edition bike, but well, it is available right now and I think it looks cool. I do love anniversary bikes. More tech later. Now the subject of homemade cycling tech and things that you could be doing from the comfort of your own home is very fresh in my mind because whilst at the UAE tour and at the top of Jebel Hafid, I bumped into a GCN viewer, Raymond Afoqua, and he told me that he was absolutely loving the videos I did with Adam Hansen and Rob Hales all about working with custom carbon fiber. And well, he told me he was even planning on making a pair of his own shoes. Now, I have to be honest with you, when I left you that day, I thought to myself, that's a big, tall order because, well, it took Adam Hansen three years to actually develop his, but less than a week later, you sent me through the first initial moulds of shoes that you've been making in the casts and stuff. So fair play to you. You've got the bit between your teeth, I reckon, and a fellow tech nerd out there because then you sent me some pictures of a skin suit that you've been developing, which is waterproof, windproof, and ideal for really cold weather conditions. So Raymond, I doff my cap to you. And then, totally unannounced, I had some emails from someone called Chet Langford in Indianapolis over there in the United States. And well, they've been really letting loose with the custom airbrushing on their girlfriend's bike. Just check out these pictures. So Chet, well, he's painted the frame, the forks, the wheels, the Dralia cage. And what Chet thinks is the first pair of custom painted Ultegra R8000 cranks in the world. That is mind blowing. I really want a pair of cranks to look like that. Although I don't know how long they'd stay looking so shiny. Either way, it's cool, it's custom and it's yours. But what have you been doing to customize your tech? Are you like Raymond and a dab hand with carbon fiber? Or are you like Chet and pretty good at airbrushing? Either way, I wanna see your custom tech. So make sure you use the uploader tool down there in the description below and upload it for us to check out. And who knows, maybe you'll make it onto a future episode of The Tech Show. Plus, I must just give a quick shout out to a new Facebook group we've got. The link to it is in the description below, GCN Tech Upgrades. So you can show off now the latest project or a little bit of custom tech you're working on so the rest of us tech nerds can, well, geek out on it. 
More tech of the week now, an Irish bike brand, 51 Bikes, a brand which I really admire for their designs and ideas, have just recently announced that they're gonna be showing off two very special bikes. Now, the first one is a modern day remake of this Bianchi time trial bike that Evgeny Burzin was using back in the mid 90s. It does have a quite similar look to it, to Old Faithful that Graham Obrey designed, but this one is called Burzin meets Brooklyn, and you can see just why, can't you? And I love it. It does take a lot of guts to do something quite so outrageous as this. Now, it's got a 12-speed one-by group set on there, so you can guess who that's come from, as well as Bluetooth control gearing. Apparently, they even had to redesign the frame jig in order to build this frame because of where the different tubes were going, because it's nothing like a conventional frame. I don't reckon they're gonna sell many, but something they are gonna do is turn many heads with a design like this. And also, they've been busy making this bike for heavyweight boxing champion, Anthony Joshua, who we definitely need to custom bike because he's six foot five tall, which is just under two meters, weighs 113 kilos, and naturally, he wanted some finishing touches on there. So he's got 25.7 apparently, because he's, well, going the extra mile from 24.7. He's got a custom gold painted line on the head tube, and then 2201 on the chainstay, which stands for second to no one. And that custom bike is built fully out of NV composite carbon tubes. Now these bikes will be on display at the North American hand-built bike show and we aim to get a closer look at them. Now sadly, I can't actually go because of some visa problems out of my control. But the good news is, Catherine, my colleague, she will be going over to actually check out all the latest and greatest bits of hand-built tech from that show. I'm so excited. I know she's chomping at the bit too. So keep an eye on the channel because we're gonna have some cracking videos coming out. Right now, time for the part of the show called Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades. So the idea behind this is that you submit pictures using the uploader tool down there in the description of before and after photos of bits of tech that you've upgraded for the chance of winning your very own GCN workshop apron. The eagle-eyed of you will have noticed new design going on there, designed by yours truly, I must add. Right, first up though, we need to announce last week's winner. It was between Sebastian and Tim, a Pinarello versus a Hercules, and the winner, with 65% of the votes, was Sebastian with that Pinarello. So well done, Sebastian. I had you on the edge of your seat there, didn't I? Get in touch with us on Facebook to arrange delivery of your apron. Right then, let's crack on to this week's contenders. Are you ready? Right. First up is Jolly from Norfolk in England. Jolly bought a pair of Physique R1 shoes and Jolly's cousin, who's an artist, did the bespoke design on them for Jolly. There's the biggest climbs they've done, Mount Taide at 7,144 feet, highest speed at 57 miles per hour, number of Britain's greatest climbs completed and the KOM crowns, one for every 30 KOMs they have. Look at those, they've gone from white to, well, a pretty decorated pair, I must say. Right, Jolly, you're up against Chris, though, this week from Bunbury in Western Australia, one of my favorite places. Right then, Chris wanted to start riding, so he bought a Look KG76 frame all beaten up with a seat post stuck in it for just 70 Australian dollars. $800 later, and it's a fully working, running Ultegra 6800 group set bike with fulcrum three wheels, and it's super light at just seven kilos. Chris, this is a beauty and a bike frame which I am extremely jealous of you having because you got that for just $70. Those things sell for hundreds and hundreds of pounds normally. I do hope you're not trying to pull uh, my heartstrings here and trying to get me to vote for you. Either way, what I am also interested in, how on earth did you get a 130 overlock nut diameter hub inside of a 126 millimeter overlock nut diameter frame? You could well be doing a little bit of damage there, but you did tell me, Chris, that it is working all okay. But who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Jolly in those customized shoes or Chris and that, well, bargain look frame? You decide. Vote up there. Next week, we'll reveal the results and have two more battling it out here. Right, Bike of the Week time. The part of the show where you get to vote on your favorite bike out of two that we put head to head. And well, let's have a little recap on last week's contenders. First up, we had that super light Cannondale of Dan Evans and Ollie's Orbea Orca. And well, you'll notice that this week, Ollie's not with me. Presumably he's sulking because Dan Evans' bike, well, it well and truly kicked Ollie into touch with 63% of the votes. Congratulations, Dan Evans. 
Right, let's move on then to this week's contenders. Two bikes from Strada Bianchi from last weekend. First up is the Scott Foil RC of Annemiek van Vleuten. It's got full Shimano Jura Ace DI2 group set, Jura Ace wheels, Pirelli tyres, a great looking bike. It's up against the Cervelo R5 of Nicholas Roach of Team Sunweb. Now the bike, again, it's got full Shimano Jura Ace group set, Jura Ace wheels on there too, and some really nice looking paintwork. Who's it gonna be though? Is it gonna be the bike of Van Vleuten or the bike of Roach? You decide, vote up there, top right hand corner. Next week, the results will be announced and two more are gonna fight it out. Right, bike vault time. So you know what that means, the bell is back. The bell is back. I'm back, I'm on my own, so I don't even have to consult with anyone else this week. So if you want your bike to go into the bike vault, you know what to do by now. If you're not well aware what to do, simply use that uploader tool down below and include pictures of your bike, where you're from, details about the bike, anything you think could convince the judge to give you a super nice, only joking. Right, anyway, let's crack on. The first entrant this week is Uma Muli from Erendingen in Switzerland. Now it's an Orbea Orca Aero. Um, what's it got on it? Shimano Ultegra Di2. It's got some pretty deep section wheels on there. With nice cotton sidewall tyres. Look like a pair of Specialized. KMC gold chain. Awkward. Uh, yeah, great looking bike. The only thing I'm a little bit hesitant about this one, Umamuli, is that the saddle. I know it's not really far back on the rails, but because of the drop nose on it, it's one of those Sally SMPs, I think. Um, it looks like it's really far back on the rails, so I'm... I don't know, I pers... I, sorry, nice bike, nice bike. Moving on. All right, Tom from Warwickshire. Now, Tom says this is their latest pride and joy, which Sigma Sports, which is a bike shop in the UK, managed to get hold of them, despite Specialized not actually releasing the team frame in the UK. So as you can see, it is one of those beautiful Specialized S-Works. I love that. It looks really great. You've got your oval wheels on there too, to match in nicely. Apparently, they're the S-Works Hell of the North clincher tires too. And well, Tom reckons this is the only one of its kind in the UK. It's shot, that is such a traditional British backdrop, Tom from Warwickshire. Yeah, it's gonna get it. It's gonna get a ring. Bell. Right, first super nice this week. Next up is Neil from Estepona in Spain. Beautiful part of the world, Neil. Right, it, uh, it's a special edition 2014 Mark Cavendish Specialized Venge frame set built up as a replica, including custom Zip 404 decals. Check that out. We've got, yeah, the I2, tick. Uh, rotor chain set, really cutaway rings on that one. Green speed play pedals. To geek out a bit on this one. Zip stem matching. It was like an Adamo saddle with the green bits on the back there too. That's a nice one. I like the backdrop of that too. Yeah. Do you know what? You're gonna get Neil. You're gonna get super nice, mate. Congratulations. Right. Next up is Micah in Australia. Now, Micah, classic case. You need to give a bit more of a description where you're from than just Australia. Big old place that. Both me and Quacker, the cameraman, we went down there for the tour down under. We know just how big the place is. Anyway, Scott Fold DO2. It looks to have some old school zip wheels on there too. Wow, they are really old in fact. They're probably one of the first or second generations with those logos. It's got a skinny old chain set on there. Looks like a campaign chain set or something. Nice graffiti in the background. Always a big fan of graffiti, as long as it's legal. Um, yeah, it's a nice looking bike. I, I would like to see the bars rotated a little bit more, but I do understand that your comfort is key, so you're getting a ring off my belt. <laughs> Super nice. Right, next up is Reed from Rhode Island in the United States of America. Apparently, it's a 1987 Bianchi Brava. Uh, it's got a Shimano Jura Ace 7400 group set. I love that group set so much. It's probably my favorite Jura Ace ever. Uh, apparently, though, it does have the 7800 brakes, so a couple of generations on. And that is a whopping 55 tooth chainring on there, too. I love those. They're, you know, big, full of logos, but it's just a great looking chainring. Uh, we've got a downward facing stem. It's like a Nitto one or something like that, like an NJS style Kieran stem. Physique saddle, so going pretty modern with that. And then we've got some modern hunt wheels, it looks like, too. So they're going to be probably running tubeless tyres, those Schwalbers. That's a 
It's like a, a retro bike, but still looks absolutely bang on. So good news, you're getting a ring of the bell. You know what to do by now. Submit pictures of your bike using the uploader tool down there in the description below. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, you will get the most coveted award of them all, and that is super nice. Right, there we are, nearly time for the end of the show. But don't worry, we've got heaps more great content coming up, including I'm gonna be building up that cheap bike to super bike from scratch, a video which loads of you have wanted from us for a very long time. Also, footage from Catherine, who's out there at the North American Handbuilt Bicycle Show. I'm very excited to see what she's gonna be sending back. So make sure you do subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. So click that little notification button too, so you get a little bing each and every time we put up some great content. Don't forget to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got loads of goodies for you to check out. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking just down here, just down here.